The following video is a tutorial for the service and maintenance of hammerhead mold bolted piercing tools with the screw reverse feature. This training will cover the disassembly, inspection, and replacement of all internal parts and the body. This tutorial does not cover the service and maintenance of the head assembly. For information specific to your head assembly, please refer to the service video dedicated to your model. Before servicing your piercing tool, identify the tool model and the reverse mechanism. Screw reverse tools require several turns of the rear whip hose to change the gear and will have four or more bolts on the back of the tool. Inspect the exterior of the tool body. Check for cracks, severe wear, and damage from utility strikes. Replace the body assembly when necessary as damage could lead to future failure. Inspect the whip hose for rips or tears. Check the tail bolt heads for wear. Perform a tip test to assure the striker is sliding freely within the body. Tip the tool. The striker should freely float from one end to another. Secure the piercing tool using either a pipe stand or a chain wrench. With two wrenches, remove the external whip hose. To remove the rear assembly, start by loosening the tail bolts approximately two rotations each and unscrew the rear assembly from the body. Remove and clean the rear assembly. And finally, slide out the striker. Be careful not to damage the internal body threads. There are three major components to all hammerhead mole piercing tools. The body assembly, striker, and rear assembly. Inspect the tool body for debris. Clean the interior of the body by brushing or swabbing. Inspect the body for broken or damaged threads. Repair with an internal thread file if necessary. Bodies containing broken threads should be replaced. The serial number of the piercing tool is located on the back end of the tool body, shown here. Remove the rings off the striker and inspect and clean the ring grooves with a wire brush or wire wheel. Do not grind, polish, or sand the striker. Inspect the ring grooves. The grooves must be square. Worn ring grooves may cause poor performance and the striker should be replaced. Inspect the length of the striker body for cracks, fractures, or any other external damage. Cracked or fractured strikers must be replaced. Perform an internal inspection of the striker bore for debris, brush, and swab as necessary. Clean the striker rings and install on the striker. Check the striker rings for wear with a straight edge. The rings should stand proud of the ring groove. Shown here is a ring in need of replacement. Notice the gap between the straight edge and the ring. Polished striker surfaces may indicate the tool has been run with worn rings, which may slightly hinder tool performance. Check the ring gaps with two U.S. quarters. Consult the operator's manual for exact ring gap specifications. Trim the rings if necessary. Before reinstalling the striker, lubricate the tool body and the striker rings. Install the striker into the body. The rear assembly of a screw reverse tool contains eight components. The rear anvil, tail cone, tail bolts, valve, valve retainer, valve ring, 
internal hose, and rear whip hose. Before disassembling the rear assembly, perform a general inspection. Inspect the internal hose for damage or blistering rubber. Replace the internal hose if necessary. Inspect the rear assembly and clear any debris or blockage. Inspect the tail bolts for wear. Replace the entire set of tail bolts if found to be rounded, damaged, or severely worn. The internal hose should be flexible. Check the valve chamfer and outer surface for wear. Severely worn valves should be replaced. Using a straight edge, check the valve ring for wear. The valve ring must stand proud of the valve and valve retainer. Shown here is a valve ring in need of replacement. Notice the gap between the straight edge and the ring. Check the valve ring gap using one U.S. quarter. Trim the ring if necessary. Screw the internal hose all the way forward. Measure the length of the valve assembly from the interface of the rear anvil to the top of the valve. The length should be plus or minus a sixteenth of an inch from the specification listed in the operator's manual. If not in tolerance, further service is required. Remove the tail bolts and tail cone. Before removing the valve, wrap the valve in a cloth to prevent damage to the valve surface and ring. Secure the valve and remove the valve retainer using the Allen wrench provided with your tool assembly. Remove the valve ring from the retainer. To remove the hose from the valve, Remove the assembly from the vise and clamp it from the other side. The hose has a left hand thread. Use a wrench to remove the hose from the valve by turning clockwise. Unthread the hose from the rear anvil. Remove the valve from the chain vise. With the rear assembly disassembled, complete an inspection of the components. Inspect the tailbolt heads and threads for damage. If one or more tailbolts are missing or damaged, replace the entire set. Inspect the threads of the rear anvil. Use a thread file to repair any damaged threads. Rear anvils with broken threads should be replaced. Check for debris inside the bolt holes and exhaust ports. Clean as necessary. Inspect both rear anvil stops for wear. Inspect the tail cone for damage and debris. Check the tail bolt holes for wear. Use a straight edge to check the mating surface. The mating surface of this tail cone is damaged. The surface is not square and has mushroomed from a previous incorrect installation. Inspect the valve retainer for cracks or damage to the threads. Confirm that the Allen wrench slot is intact. Replace the valve retainer if damage is present. Inspect the valve threads and valve chamfer for wear. Replace if necessary. Inspect the screw reverse threads of the internal hose for wear. The stops must be square on the screw reverse threads. Check for damaged threads on the rear whip hose connection. Replace the internal hose if damage or severe wear is present on either of the threads. Inspect the external whip hose threads and the coupler connection. Replace as necessary. Begin the reassembly of the rear assembly by liberally coating the threads of the internal hose with anti-seize and threading the internal hose into the rear anvil. Wrap and clamp the valve. Using a wrench, reverse thread the internal hose into the valve until it bottoms out. To install the valve, remove the assembly from the vise and clamp it from the other side. Coat the valve retainer with anti-seize and install it into the valve. Complete the installation using an Allen wrench. Torque the valve retainer to manufacturer's specifications. Remove the assembly from the vise. Screw the internal hose all the way forward. 
dip the tail bolt threads in anti-seize and install them into the tail cone. Align the bolt holes of the rear anvil with the tail bolts and install the tail cone. Do not tighten the tail bolts all the way. Install the valve ring and recheck the ring gap using one U.S. quarter. If necessary, trim the ring. With the internal hose screwed all the way forward, measure the length of the valve assembly from the inner face of the rear anvil to the top of the valve. The length should be plus or minus 1 16th of an inch from the specification listed in the operator's manual. Before installing the rear assembly, lubricate the valve ring and striker bore. Apply anti-seize to the rear anvil and the body threads. Install the rear assembly into the body. Check the operator's manual for rear assembly instructions. Some models require full installation of the rear anvil, while others require backing off the rear anvil up to an eighth of a turn. Confirm that the internal hose is completely into forward. Tighten and torque the tail bolts in a star pattern according to the manufacturer's specifications located in the operator's manual. Finish the reassembly by tightening the rear whip hose with two open face wrenches. Perform a tip test to assure the striker is sliding freely within the body. Tip the tool, and the striker should float freely from one end to another. Following a regular service schedule will keep your hammerhead mole piercing tools running at maximum efficiency.